Okay, we're back and we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the things but more in a specific way than we talked in general. And so I brought some charts with me that will actually help show you the different areas that uh, I was talking about. If you look at the hands, there's points on the fingers, on the tips, in the webbing, also all over the palm of the hand and down into the wrist area. And the good thing about the hands and the feet is basically they're symmetrical. They're exactly the same on one hand as they are on the other hand, except that the way that it works is that the right hand and the right foot control the right side of the body. The left hand and the left foot control the left side of the body. And it's the same with the ear, too, is that basically they control the side of the body that they're on. Now here's a picture of the feet, and you can see the toes are involved in what's going on. And then you have the balls of the foot and then also the heel. And as you look at each of these, and it's the weirdest experience, uh, the scientists, they came out with a multiple of probes. And they came out with a specific probe that was for foot reflexology and hand reflexology. And needless to say, every time the scientists would come out with a new probe or a new type of machine, I was a little bit incredulous. You know, they would tell me what the machines would do, and I go, oh, you know, Betty and I would be driving back, because we'd have to meet with the scientists late at night, like at 12 o'clock at night in remote locations, because these guys, uh, you know, they're national treasures. They uh, created this technology to help people. <clears throat> So we had to meet with them at times when they weren't doing their regular job where they were high-tech consultants for big companies. And so they would come up with a new machine and say, oh, Ralph, this is what it's going to do and this. You know, it's hard to believe what they said. They came up with this hand and foot reflex probe and it looked like a little meat tenderizer. And they said when you get a right on the particular area, it will make a big difference on how that person feels. And so I got it and I tried it out. And man alive, it really did put the energy into the system. It was like your hair would stand on end if it wasn't already standing on end. But, you know, as weird as it may be, it did help patients that nothing else did, all the different therapies. They came up with over 50 different probes to treat every specific aspect of the human body that anybody knew about in certain areas that only they knew about. Um, and needless to say, that's sort of the catch-22 of this instrumentation is you don't need all those probes. Usually just the basic probes were more than enough to help to bring the body back into balance. I was talking about the auricular therapy, and here's a chart that we created that had all the acupuncture points in the ear that we broke into little segments so you could actually find the specific area that was related to the part of the body that you're treating. And when the scientists first told me about this type of uh, therapy and treating the ears at the same time, I was, you know, I just thought, gee, that sounds kind of weird. <coughs> Excuse me. But I decided to try it anyway. We would go to conventions and we would have like hundreds of people come up to our booth and I told the people, look, don't tell me what's wrong with you. I'm going to just go ahead and just bounce out all the acupuncture points in your ear and then you tell me once I get done whether you feel any different or not. So I did probably 200 people and easily 70% of those people noticed a dramatic change on how their bodies felt. And uh, it convinced me at that time, I could hardly believe it, that it worked so well. And so the ear points are something that for some people it's hard to accept, but it's a way of getting additional benefits for the patient if you actually go to the acupuncture point in the ear that's related to the area that you're actually using. In some cases, like uh, say I was treating a woman at a convention or whatever, and she didn't want to disrobe, which you can understand at a medical booth is not a good idea to do. And so at a lot of the conventions, I'd actually just treat the acupuncture point like for the neck or for the back or whatever in the ear, and also the points that I knew on the hands and on the legs. And the person would notice uh, improvement in their condition. In some cases, just treating the acupuncture points, people were completely pain-free. So it's a powerful, powerful system. What we found in working with different patients and working with them on this technology, usually you can increase your results by 10% just doing the ear points in addition to what you're already doing. And it will add maybe a 20% longer improvement. It will keep the improvement going for a longer period of time. Now this is a picture of the acupuncture, not the acupuncture, but the trigger points. There are certain points that were discovered by a um, lady called Janet Trevell. She was an MD. And she noticed that there were certain areas in the body, in the musculature of the body, that when you had a certain pain in a particular area, that it was basically radiating from that particular part of the body. 
And so on this little chart, I have all the major trigger points that are related to the different pains in those particular areas. And the way that you work with these is that if you press on them, it's called palpating them, the patient actually will feel a pain in that particular area for the points that are active. So you have dominant points and you have satellite points that are referring to the dominant points. And so what we would end up doing is when we get patients, we would go through and they would tell us what area the body actually hurt. Um, and we'd give them a choice of either the top part or the lower part because once the patients find out how well this technology works, you know, you'd be in there working on them for hours and uh, you wouldn't have time to work on any of the other patients. And so I gave them a choice of upper half or lower half. And there's a good reason why we wouldn't do the whole body because when you take a person, if they have a lot of problems and you treat the whole body, you charge up all the systems. You charge up the muscles, the nerves, the uh, microenergy systems, and sometimes you can charge people up too much and the body's not able to facilitate the healing process. When a person gets too much energy into the system, what are some of the things that can happen? They get nervous, they feel a tremendous amount of relief, and because they experience that relief, um, when they go back home, there is no way, way the body could have healed itself 100% to that degree, and so the pain starts coming back. And so the patient would consider that therapy as uh, a failure. Even though they got some relief, or maybe total relief for a little while, the pain came back and the people experienced it as a failure just because of the idea is that it was a false promise of a cure. Let's face it, everybody's looking for the magic bullet. You know, if there's a pill that can fix me, I'd like to take it. Um, I don't know if they've created one yet, but it would sure be nice to find one because I've had so many injuries and health problems my entire life and I'm always searching to try and solve the remnants of the problems that I've had. Well, most people, when you treat them with this technology, the idea is to provide the benefits that are in line with what's possible for the body to heal itself. You know, how long does it take for the body to heal up an injury usually? All summer for me. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it depends on each person, but on the average it's going to take two weeks for most people for the body to completely heal itself. So the idea with this type of technology is that it works so well is to basically strive to get a 20 to 30 percent improvement with that person. And the way that we're going to work it, we've got special charts that we have that we keep track of the patients. You ask the patient when they come in on a scale of 10 down to a zero, where is your pain at this point in time? And it's the reverse of the Bo Derrick scale. You know, all the women wanted to be a 10, but in our pain scale, everybody wants to be zero. And so when they come in, it's crucial to ask them where they're at because you'll be able to look at the previous treatment that you gave them and see where they're at, whether they've retained the uh, benefits that they got the last time or whether their pain has come back whether it's got worse or how much it's got better. So you always want to ask the patient before you treat them what it was and after you get done where it is. And keep track of that because that's the way of showing the progress that you're actually accomplishing with that person. So our idea is when you're treating somebody is to continually ask them through the therapy, how do you feel on that scale of 10 down to a zero? Okay, so most of the times when you work on somebody, if it's just classical pure pain, you can work on them for about uh, three or four minutes and ask them, and most people will have noticed a dramatic change. Sometimes it'll be 80 to 90 percent just in a couple minutes. Now, if the person has a fairly severe or a long existing injury or problem, do you think that just treating them for three or four minutes is going to resolve that problem that's going to heal up instantly? No way. That's not the way the body works. We need to have common sense and understanding what the technology does. This is specifically designed to help the body heal itself to be. <laughs>